Hello and welcome to Default Assault, where we take on everything by default. I'm your host, Samosthenes, and with me, as always, is Mr. Kyle Nash. How's it going, Kyle? I'm ready to drop a show with you. That is deadly awesome. <laughs> That's Well, there's a reason I'm wearing black. We're, we're here. We're here to mourn together. So today we're going to talk about our top three childhood nostalgic traumas from from kid movies, from our own childhood. So basically from Demos's age of 0 to 12 or 13, Kyle from 0 to 12 or 13, character deaths that we saw in kiddie movies that, ha that left an impact. There are so many characters that have died or nearly died or have had um, their own traumatic experiences from childhood cartoons. I think that to this day affect us much more than deaths that we see in adult content. Dude, like, okay, when we were talking, prepar preparing for this episode, how long did we spend talking about Chief from The Fox and the Hound? Well, I couldn't accept the fact that the movie version, he actually lives, where the book my grandmother used to read to me, he died. It threw me off, and I'll tell you, it bothered me more than most of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. The Fox and the Hound is one f***ed up book. <laughs> Everybody dies. <laughs> I mean, the... I like Infinity War. Oh, wait. Is that a spoiler? I, I, whatever. Watch the movie. This, is, this, this is worse. I mean, it has an ending that puts some of our top spots to shame when you think about it. But we'll, we'll get to that. I have a feeling that we'll be talking about Fox and the Hound yet again towards the end of, of this list. This is one that you had to actually help, kind of help me remember because this character uh, from the movie is, is more kind of like it isn't you don't think of him as a kid but he is and the fact that you realize when the ish goes down in the final battle and he does die you're like that's a kid that just got killed by an adult and listen i agree with the point when someone asks especially dustin hoffman what would the world be like without captain hook that's a pretty bad place i have to be honest with you however the death that really bugged me well, Rufio. Rufio was some troubling stuff. You know, he's all like, looky, looky, I got hooky. It's great. He's like, oh, that's good. Oh, sh what? No. Um, I, and you look back to, 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 the, to, the, to the booth, to the, to the film booth in the theater, be like, you, you, put, you put the wrong, wrong movie in there. What does... Why did the kid get stabbed by the old guy? This is the one with a European ending. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I'm going to have to put, uh, like, a sun drop in the high being Rufio. I thought the character had a pretty good redemption arc. The problem is after you see Hook kill him, you want to see him. You want to see Hook die at that point. You know, he killed a, a freaking kid. You want to see him die. And then they have, you know, what would the world be like without Captain Hook? And then, I believe in you, Peter. I believe in you, Peter. I believe in you, Peter Pan. It just, the entire ending of that movie, the entire starts and stops, starts and stops. You already set the stakes with Rufio. Commit to it, goddammit. Listen, I mean, I, I, I like the part where where uh, where Pan spares him because while you set the stakes, you also establish what Pan is. And, and it's still innocence at the end of the day. So Hook had to live. And besides, the dude makes a brilliant point when he asks, what would the world be like without Captain Hook? That's that's fine. But the road to that moment, the lots and starts, the starts and stops, the the pacing oh, of that. Know. That, that shit gets a little crazy. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And then he gets eaten by the crocodile anyway. So there's another nostalgic death for you. Dustin Hoffman <laughs> getting eaten by a dead crocodile. He didn't really die. No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's still alive, if you believe, Kyle. My number three pick is, is one of, okay, <laughs> I'm going to make the pun here, but it's, it's, uh, it's on the nose. Is one of bad execution. So growing up, I I I, I loved um, I watched Star Trek as a kid. I was first introduced to Star Trek: The Next Generation. I used to watch it with my dad growing up, and then I started watching the original series, and then I started watching the the films. My dad bought the the six uh, pack 
VHS collection that mm. had, um, you know, I, I think if any of you remember it, every single cassette lined up to form the Starship Enterprise. Mm. Um, Actually. I watched them all. So you're going to think, oh, he's going to mention Spock. Well, <laughs> I, no, no, it's not Spock. And I'll tell you why it's not Spock. It's an effective death. And I can see why many people would mention it on their list. And rightly so. They dude would mention died. they yeah. would mention Spock. It's not close. The dude dies. He has to be uh he has to be brought back to life by way of genesis of a planet to be resurrected. Spock dies. Period. Yes. However, it didn't really affect me as a kid because oh look, I have the cassette. What's the next one called? The search for Spock. Oh, okay. So it it didn't really have as big of an effect on me, uh, not as much of a big effect as the one movie I didn't own at the time and the first Star Trek movie I saw in theaters, Star Trek Generations, where Captain Kirk died. No, no, no. He didn't die on the bridge of his ship taking down Klingons or, or in battle or something. No, no, no. He died by having a literal bridge fall on him. <laughs> Demos, I have to disagree with you a little bit here. Uh -oh. First, I'm not ready to call Star Trek a kiddie movie, but I'll let it slide. Um, it's close enough. I, I it, it, it has kiddie roots. For, yeah, I'll let it slide. No, I, I listen. Yeah, you, you'll probably have bigger problems with that in the comments section and on 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 the Twitter account at default hilarity than you will with me here. It was rated PG. Um, <laughs> whatever. It, it, you're trying too hard to fight me on this one, but I know why you're saying it is for those people who might hit you up at default hilarity on Twitter. Um, Bring it. Cheap plugs. Anyways, no, but the, 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 the thing about it is, and you're going to hate this. I actually just thought it was a mediocre death scene. I'm like, okay, well he kind of went out with a flash, but he was saving the universe. Eh, okay. Again, like you picking star Trek as a kitty movie here. I kind of just let it pass. When you told me about the bridge, uh, the bridge uh, symbolism there, that actually made it pretty cool for me. I'm, I'm sorry, but I was willing to let it slide as eh, mediocre. And then when you told me about the bridge thing, it gave it weight to me. I, I kind of like it, dude. I'm sorry. Granted, it's not a tragic thing, but I, I appreciate what they're trying to do there. Except for the fact that that was unintended. And I'll tell you why. The film had a different ending that they filmed. And they went back and they rushed it into reshoots to get the ending that we have now. In the original ending, which you can see on the DVD, or you can probably find it on YouTube if you look it up, was Captain Kirk. Literally, you know, after they knock Soren off the mountain or whatever, they think he's gone, whatever. He, he, and you can actually even see this line in the trailer. He says, oh, the 24th century isn't so tough. Malcolm McDowell shoots him in the back and Kirk dies and then Picard shoots Malcolm McDowell. We got the better ending, kid. I'd hate oh, to tell you. Oh, yeah. We definitely got the better ending. But all I'm saying is the, the symbolism behind the ending, I'm not buying it for one bit. I don't think that was intended. The way that it was, like I said before, bad pun, but executed was just was very, very poor. Ah, this guy. He did it twice. And I think the second time it landed much better. Oh, Anyways. thanks. You know, it's kind of funny because the next two, we kind of agree on. Uh, there are, are, are key characters from this movie that, that I remember, but I remember their characters because I like their names. Um, I, I did have this book read to me, or at least it wasn't the entire story, mind you, but it was like, you know, an adventure in the forest with some of the animals. And, and I remember the characters because their names were, were always uh, unique. You know, there was something that described the character other than the way that you would expect. Like Pepe Le Pew is obvious if you're going to name a skunk who happens to also be French and possibly a molester in public. But the punchline is this. Um, if you thought you were going to name a skunk Flower, guess what? That's a thing, and it happened in Bambi. Thumper the, the, the bunny rabbit. Bambi's sidekick was amazing. Bambi as, as, as a deer is something you... A, a doe, technically. Uh... Doe is a female deer. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Instead of saying doe, I'm going to say fawn. No! Fawn. Fawn is correct. Thank you. Doe! Fawn. Anyways, see what I did there? Yeah. Um, 
the the however none of those characters die but it is the shooting of bambi's mother by hunters that is stands among the most tragic of parental deaths in my mind in general and works to basically scar anybody who saw the movie of a particular age like you and i were i believe i was in kindergarten at the time i could have been a little older i don't remember but yeah a Bambi's mother is the animated death that trumps all animated uh, deaths, especially of parental figures. It started its own trope, for God's sakes, of uh, the mother always being dead in uh, in Disney films. Um, even Dumbo got off lucky. His mother was just uh, uh, shackled up and put in the uh, elephant sanitarium. Um, <laughs> but let's, I mean, uh, let's get beyond the fact that Bambi is one of the most beautifully animated films of all time. I, yes. Many sources have claimed that it's Walt's favorite of the animated films. And if, it, if that holds true, I can see why. Um, it has a lot in common with many of the other animated deaths you, may, you might cite. Mufasa in The Lion King. <laughs> or, or Littlefoot's mother in The Land Before Time. Um, and... You should check it out. I'll have the link below on, on Hilarity by Default. I actually created a an infograph that cites all the similarities between Bambi and Lion King. Some of them, some details, some specific shots and details are uh, are kind of mind-blowing. It, there is a lot of uh, – Lion King does hold a lot of Bambi's uh, essence and soul in its, in its own story, in its Let own – coming of age story um it's just it's harder for me to see mufasa as a tragedy okay for one listen anybody who's a monarch in real life animal or not would see scar and know to keep him out of the way a little bit more okay it was a desperation situation fine if zazu could actually keep simba under control this ain't a thing it's Mufasa's own fault for appointing a goddamn toucan or whatever the hell he is to watch over his free-spirited son. I'm willing to bet that he could find some other badass uh, African animal that would keep that, that damn cub in line. And if you don't want to blame Mr. Bean, which I could totally side with, then it's Mufasa's fault for appointing him in the first place. And Scar saw the opportunity by way of the fact Zazu couldn't handle business and Scar being smart, well... He knows how to be prepared at the very least. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. I think I think you're getting to to a certain point in that there was. I think that what separates, I think what makes Bambi more effective is the realistic nature behind the death. It's something yeah. that happens every single day. It's yeah. something that in in this particular character's life is something that it very much is likely to happen. Uh, I. I don't know that much about lion hierarchy in the wild, but I don't know if there have been any cases of other male lions orchestrating wildebeest stampedes to take part of to, to take control of their pride. <laughs> the only thing that t- takes control Planet of- Earth three, where is it? Come on. Listen, the only thing that should take control of anyone's pride is Mufasa's pride for letting Zazu be the end of him. I'm just saying. And oh, by the way, I don't mean a group of lions. I mean his theoretical pride. I'm just saying. I, I mean, what I think that what Lion King does is basically it takes the the idea of the of. I mean, it's still a very good scene. It's still very effective. Oh, and, oh yeah. Listen, honorable mention, but don't be telling me it's tragic. I, I, it's tragic. I don't think you can make the argument that it's not tragic. It's a little baby cub nuzzling the dead, bloody carcass of his father. That 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 was that was I uh, you know because I had I had the long live the king in my head yeah. more than I had Papa. Uh, okay, yeah, you, you got me there. That that's that's a moving uh, shit. All no I'm question. saying is it took Bambi's mother, ba- the death of Bambi's mother, and upped it because Bambi never saw. His his mother being turned into uh, a a lab a, a log cabin rug, you know he, he well, never saw a meal of venison. Listen, the, yeah. uh, the, that's part of that's the other thing why I got to put Bambi's mother so much higher than Mufasa's. It happened off screen, and it still impacted you. That mm-hmm. that's that's the point. It's just that they um, a Lion King kind of kind of pushed it a little bit more, and in in a way, in a way uh, Littlefoot's mother 
in the land before time is kind of sits in between them because he still finds her bloody carcass after the Tyrannosaurus uh, attack, and he tries to nuzzle in, nuzzle with her, and she still has enough life left in her to urge him on to continue to to the valley and so forth. And so, you, how much pain is she in doing that? Yeah, no, I got you. Oh, I I recently watched that again. I've been going through some of Don Bluth's films I hadn't watched in such a long time, and you can see you don't see it. Um, at least I don't quite recall if you actually see her, you see the T-Rex ripping shreds out of, out of her other than in the shadow, you see the shadow against the rocks. You see, right. I like, Holy crap. That was intense. It's Jurassic pretty- Park didn't have dinosaur and dinosaur action that intense. Yes. I, I, yes, that is definitely true. Um, but it kind of sits like right in between there's, this is an es- escalation of uh, parental carcass death. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> You're making PCD. That's uh, right. But Bambi's mother is the unfortunate MVP here. Demos, I, I I just happen to have a copy of Bambi here in my drawer. Drawer. It's uh, written by Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get to our number one pick, let's uh let's hit up some some runner ups that didn't quite make the list. And I'm gonna kick it off with Anti from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Dear God! Poor little baby ant getting, like, savaged by that scorpion. To this day, I, I have trouble watching that scene in that film. I, I kid you not. Um, okay, I have to be honest. I mowed a lot, of, a lot of lawns and did a lot of yard work to make money as a kid. F ants right in their face. Didn't lose a single ounce of sleep. Though I will give you credit, that scorpion was pretty creepy. I, I come, okay, at the time I was living in Florida, which is crazy enough on its own, where they have freaking fire ants, fire ants that sting you. Uh, you if, if you put your hand, you don't want to sit in the grass and have a nice picnic in Florida. You put your hand in the wrong place. You're going to be suffering for days. Um, you- but even so, even so, that scene in uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, man. Um <laughs> it's it's effective, but holy shit! I think that was the time that we we should probably elaborate a little bit on Chief from the Fox and the Hound. Absolutely. Listen, this guy right here. The only reason why he doesn't make it is because he technically doesn't die in the movie. In the book, the whole situation where you have uh, I'm a fox, I'm a hound dog, and it's all great and happy until it's not. You know, and 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 that whole situation. Listen, have none of you people seen Dances with Wolves? Oh, right. It didn't come out yet when you guys did that show. They actually come to think of it, Dances with Wolves doesn't exactly end great either. Damn it. Okay, well, the punchline is they're supposed to be friends, and, 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 and now they're not. Stupid real world. No. Hey, no. At least when Yeller died, they were protecting his family. This is dumb. Okay. I-, I was just disappointed as a kid that Dances with Wolves wasn't a musical, but go on. <laughs> I couldn't listen as a kid. I, 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 the only reason why I didn't walk out of that movie is because I wasn't old enough to drive yet, but I digress. Yeah. And another one I'll put on the list too, uh, just since we're talking about it. Listen, guys, uh, I know it's not a kiddie movie. This is why I didn't make the cut, but I got to throw a little love to my dude Goose from Top Gun. His name was Goose. I can't, I can't think of a bigger uh, piece of foreshadowing that his goose was going to get cooked. Jesus Christ, Demos. <laughs> Well, there's a reason why we didn't. I mean, let's be honest. We're kids of the 80s. This was an age where Raid R films were being marketed to kids. I grew up with alien toys and Terminator toys. Great to grow up with Robocop toys, a film that was practically Raid NC-17. Yes. You know, so there's a reason. So you and I, you know, saw quite quite a bit, uh, quite a few of these films at at an age that we probably shouldn't have. But whatever, you know. We, we turned out m- m- mostly normal. <laughs> um, Not on who you ask. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a reason why I didn't, we didn't include T8, you know, the T8-800 uh, in Terminator 2 or uh, Sean Connery in Highlander or anything, anything yeah. like that. I came very close myself to including uh, Tracy Bond from Under Majesty's Secret Service. You'd think that for... Uh, a James Bond film, at least at the time, you know, James Bond film from the 60s, it's going to be campy as f- Uh-uh. No, 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 no. 
She gets, they get married. She gets gunned down, and the film ends with Bond cradling her dead body. <laughs> Demo, Demo, if anyone else were the host of this show, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You know that, right? A Bond fan. Okay, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, these are these are these are characters for another list. But speaking of uh, tragic animal deaths, there are few, few. <sighs> film tropes that affect uh, the tear ducts harder than watching a beloved animal or pet die in a film. Whether sure. it's, I guess, spoiler alert, whether it's something like Marley and Me or uh, Hachi. No. Cujo? Yeah, oh. Yes, yes, Cujo. He was just misunderstood, man. The dog just needed some love, you know. Uh, <laughs> Listen, they better not remake Cujo and make him an SJW. That would just be awkward. Um, I, the, so you're gonna make a documentary? Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> so, so it's 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 bad enough when the animal dies uh, because of of a villain, um, or 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 is in the case of. Um, Dead Calm, which isn't a kid's film, far from it. Or that or that one episode of MacGyver where the dog actually knocks over the deadly virus and ages to death. Um, but it's bad enough when your dog contracts freaking rabies and you have to kill it with a shotgun yourself or a rifle. God damn it, I don't give a da uh, a care. The fact that you have to kill your own pet. Old Yeller, there's a brutal honesty to mm -hmm. this film. That, that sticks with you and perhaps because of the fact that it is a period piece in itself maintains its power to this day. There's a reason why after watching that film as a kid, and I knew going into that film because Animaniacs had made fun of it once or twice. I knew going into it what I was getting myself into, but it was Disney and I loved Homeward Bound and The Incredible Journey. I watched it and it took me many years to watch it again. I owned the VHS. And I think I only watched the VHS like two or three times because it's devastating. But at the very least, Fess Parker, a.k.a. Davy Crockett, shows up at the end. That's something. <laughs> but, man, old Yeller, what do you think? When I watch this movie, you know, uh, at, at, back, back when summer, back when summer uh, actually ended in September and school started to wind down closer to March, you know, when mommies and daddies went to school, um, <laughs> The there'll be a few days toward the end if you happen to be like, uh, let's say, in a band class or some sort of extra uh, cur curricular exploratory class um, where the curriculum, you've already done your last concert. You got some days to kill. You usually see movies. And uh, there was a substitute in that day and she played Old Yeller. Well, I had obviously heard of it associated with the tragedy and all that. I'm like, eh, OK, why not here? Let me get vested. And it's actually a pretty good show. And like. It was split up over two days because I think, you know, you, you have an hour uh, or, or so each class period, right? It wasn't it was too long for one class period. So we watched the end of it <clears throat> uh, in the second class period. And I'd seen the first half and I'm like, the f is so sad about this stuff, right? Oh, there's a bleep. Sorry, Demos. But then then we got to the part where the mother goes and this is where I knew something was up. No, that that wolf was mad. Uh-oh. Where it got real and the little kid was like, no, I'm going to let him out. I'm like, oh, you stupid little shit. I mean, I couldn't say this because I was in middle school, but all I could think of, you stupid little shit. What are you doing? Oh, my God. He told you. I don't want to play. Stop. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's growling. Ah. At that point, it, you know what was saddest for me, and this is this is what's odd about it, is is like when, he, when you actually saw Yeller growl for the first time. Oh, yeah. And, it was creepy. Like, like they hold it out to be like, well, he just might be okay. Okay, it's the last day. How you doing, boy? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and I know I'm laughing now, but that sucked. So, yeah, man. Um, God, it's yeller and it's not close. It's a heroic sacrifice, on, on, you know, for the dog saving the family yet again from the wolf. Amen. And then it's watching your best friend succumb to... Uh, a degenerative disease uh, with no other choice than euthanasia. 
Yeah, his head got blown to Asia with that shotgun. Good God. Um, I think it was a rifle. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> there wasn't a scene of Yol- Yoldiano flying across the compound. <laughs> Swallow this. Yeah! Here, Yeller, come back, Yeller. Best dog on dog in the West. Oh, God damn it, team. Hey, <laughs> it's all hilarity by default. We can get humor out of anything, bitches. This is what we do. That ending is, is effective and very a savage but brutally honest way to end uh, a Disney film and a kids film um, and it's, too, something, it's too effective uh, yeah but you know what you know I, it gives it gives you an appreciation and an understanding of, of the ups and downs of life the speech that Fez Parker gives his son at the end of the film is, is tender um, honest and a true father and son conversation of which we rarely see nowadays Mm -hmm. in, in media. Um, And also an honesty that we're kind of afraid to a degree to show kids in, in children's media to this day. Um, (laughs) uh, But then again, you know, I should point out that there was a sequel to old yeller. Demos. How could there be a sequel to old yeller if he died? Well, he had a puppy real quick. I got this. Why the f- is there a sequel to Old Yeller? Go ahead. Take a guess what the name of it is. Old Yeller 2? <laughs> it's not New Yeller? I th- it should be No, yeller. Young Yeller. No, no. Uh, Savage Sam. What? There was a sequel to Old Yeller called Savage Sam. Old Yeller's puppy is now an adult. And then the kids get kidnapped by them engines. And Savage Sam and the townsfolk have to go rescue the kids from the Indian tribe that kidnapped them. And then you see the little brother, like, hitting an Indian over the head with a rock. And, yeah, there's a reason why you don't see that one as uh, often in the video store. I'm not going to touch on the social repercussions of this because, whatever, they write themselves here. You took a dog. (laughs) Who died of rabies. And you made his son's name Savage Sam. Let that seek into why I don't like that. I think there's a serial killer called Sam later on. Maybe this was the prequel we didn't know about. No, no, that would be Old Yeller's grandson because it was the son of Sam. Oh, that would be it. The son of Savage Sam. It makes sense. Old Yeller is part of a serial killer <laughs> cinematic universe. Apparently, rabies is a hereditary disease. There we go. So what, what do you guys think? What, what, what are your, some of your saddest or, or most traumatizing character deaths from, from kids' films from, from your youth? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, we can't provide t- uh, tissues, but uh, virtu- we're offering you virtual tissues, uh. which also sounds bad but nevertheless uh, let us know in the comments below make sure to follow me on hilaritybydefault.com for fun stuff every week on twitter at default hilarity and on facebook and instagram hilarity by default kyle where can we find you yeah uh, thanks for hanging on this wild romp where you stuck in with such uh such glorious party topics as freaking old yeller and fox and the goddamn hound it killed you shut your face, Demo. Not funny. <sighs> it's hilarious by default. Jesus Lord. Anyways, of course, I'm Kyle Nash. If I can uh, survive this episode, you'll find me on Twitter at the SOTG. Of course, my Instagram is the same, the SOTG. You find me on Facebook as the student of the game. You find my writings on Blue HQ Media and on uh, the Dolphins Wire of USA Today. Uh, and of course, on Tuesday nights, check me out on Blog Talk Radio. Just search Dinner Time, where I hang out with my man Tokyo J, throwing well wishes out at him. Hope he's doing all right. Um, and uh, oh yeah, there's this thing I do where I record on Wednesday nights with this guy. He's Greek. He's very freaking macabre. And uh, yeah, good times. Uh, good God, can we get a happy episode between this and and freaking what? The Song of the South and and you making me sit through. Uh, 
uh, um, the Rocketeer, the happiest movie ever. Come on, man. Happier, all grand, until it makes me sad how bad it is. Oh, you know what makes me sad is that fact that that episode, every single time I upload it, I get copyright struck by something else that's very stupid. There's a reason why that episode keeps being delayed. Hopefully, I have it up by next week, uh, followed by Song in the South. Yes, hashtag suck at YouTube. Moving on. Uh, yeah, well, there's 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 a tragedy for you. But if you want to recommend some happy topics or to recommend some topics that are going to drive Kyle to an early death, let us know in the comments below. And make sure to check us out every Thursday where life is hilarious by default. You know what will drive me to an early death? Bill and Ted 3, okay? We're not talking about that. I'm just the The, the, the wrong film was uh, titled Bogus Journey. <laughs>